Hey guys, Ryan here, and in this video, I'm going to be covering how to install and use the Vortex Mod Manager on Linux. So one of the biggest advantages of playing games on the PC platform is that many games can be modded, and this allows you to add new skins to NPCs, improve the game's original graphics, make some edits or adjust a game's existing mechanics, or just simply fix outstanding bugs that are never fixed by the original developers. And one of the most popular places for downloading these mods from is Nexus Mods, and by extension, managing them using their mod manager called Vortex. Now, unfortunately, there isn't a Linux native mod manager. However, it is possible to run Vortex using Wine, which is a Windows compatibility layer, and this will allow you to maintain almost all of the application's original functionality. But first, we need to specify a method of installing and running Vortex on Linux. So out of all the options that are available out there, now my recommendation would be to install it using Steam Tinker Launch. This is a versatile Linux wrapper tool designed to be used with the Steam client and it allows easy graphical configuration for gaming tools such as Gamescope, Mango Hood, modern tools, as well as many more. So the first step is to install Steam Tinker Launch. Now installation vary depending on your distribution, so you want to choose the one that's most relevant to your setup. In my particular case, since I'm using Ubuntu, then I don't actually meet the hard dependency requirements of YAT. So instead, I'm going to be installing Steam Tinker Launch using the Pascal Package Manager, or aka the AUR for Ubuntu. So to install Pascal on Ubuntu, you want to open up a terminal window and then run the single installation command on the GitHub page. It's one here. Now we can choose yes for this. And then that's now installed. Once Pascal is installed, we can now finally install Steam Tinker Launch with the following command, which is Pascal I Steam Tinker Launch Git. Now, what this will do is install the latest version of Steam Tinker Launch, as well as satisfy any hard dependencies to run the application. So, now that Steam Tinker Launch is installed, we can install Vortex. First, let's launch Steam Tinker Launch from the application tray. Click on the option here where it says Vortex, and then click on the big old install button. Now when it chooses the version of Vortex Proton, you want to choose the default, which for me is G-Proton 7-48. Then click the install button to begin the installation process, but just be patient as this will take a couple of minutes. Once this process is finished, we can start Vortex with the start button. So the first step in the process is to use Vortex. Now the layout of Vortex will be familiar to anyone that's used it previously in Windows. All you want to do is simply find the game on the list that you want to manage. And click on the game tab here on the left hand side. In my particular case, I've chosen a Skyrim Special Edition. And then, if you want to install and remove mods, click on the mod section down here. As you can see, I've got a fair few installed already. Now, there are a couple of things that unfortunately do not function correctly when running Vortex through Wine, at least in my particular experience. Uh, first of all, you can't sign into your Nexus mod account using Vortex, which does mean that any download with mod manager links on the website uh, don't work. However, you can just simply manually download the mods and then install them by drag and dropping into the section down here where it says drop files. Uh, second, if you do use a mod that requires a script extender to be installed, then Vortex will tell you that it's not installed correctly and I'm gonna explain how to do that in the next step. But aside from that, Vortex functions as well as you would expect. So step four is to install some script extenders. So some mods, especially for the Elder Scrolls and Fallout series, have a requirement that you use a script extender, which do work correctly in Linux if you run the game using Steam Proton. In fact, all you need to really do is rename some files in the game's installation folder. So for example, for one of the mods that I've got installed in Skyrim is SkyUI, which requires SKSC or the Skyrim script extender. So first we need to download the latest build. I've got the anniversary edition, so it's this option here. Once that's downloaded, you want to extract this archive open up the folder, and then take a copy of everything that's inside. We're going to post, paste all of this into the game's installation path. The easiest way to get to that is if you right click on the game in Steam, go to Properties, Local Files, and then click the Browse button here. From here, paste in, overwriting any options that you get prompted for. It can also merge as well. What we need to do now is rename the Skyrim launcher file here. We're going to change that to exe.old and we're going to rename the skc464 loader as skyrimselauncher.exe. 
Now what this will do is when I now launch Skyrim, it will bypass the launcher and then load SQSE directly. Okay, so we've installed some mods, so let's load up the game and let's check that they're all working correctly. So in conclusion, Game on Linux has come a long way in the last couple of years and previously modding was honestly a pain in the backside to get working. However, with a little bit of setup, modding Windows developed games on Linux is as seamless as doing it na natively on Windows. As always guys, thank you very much for watching and if you did find this video helpful, then please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. See you later.